okay so today we'll discuss a cardiology case in our icu case series and today's case is a cardiology one we'll see a young patient who presented with mi and has right bundle branch block along with q waves in his ecg so we call it qrbb pattern and today we'll see why it is very important to pick this qrbb pattern in case of mi so let's see our today's case okay so now you can see here this is an ecg 12 lead ecg you can see there are st elevations here st elevations here obviously this patient has classical symptoms of chest pain perspiration and all classical symptoms of mi and ecg also showed st elevation so it was a case of STEMI. but what is important is there are there is q waves in the anterior leads you can see q waves have come up and there is a right bundle branch block positive in v1 and there is this s wave in v6 so this we pattern we call it q r b b b means q right bundle branch block so you need to pick this in patients who presented with mi and if this pattern is there why it is important so there are many studies present uh, on this but there is one article published recently in Canada Journal of Cardiology in November 2020, they say that echocardiographic predictors of mortality in acute anterior wall infarction with right bundle branch block and right precordial Q waves, which is known as QRBBB pattern. So basically, QRBBB pattern is a predictor that this patient has got very high chances of high mortality. It is a poor prognostic marker. So they because data is not so available so they did a retrograde uh, study and the aim of study was to estimate the incidence of short-term mortality in hospital complications of acute QRVB STEMI and identify the ECG predictors of poor outcome. So what they found that out of 272 patients of QRVB 64% they had thrombolysis and the in-hospital mortality rate was 42.6 means out of 100 patients the in hospital 42.6 patients 42 around 42 patients almost 50 percent patient didn't survive they had high incidence of ventricular tachycardia complete heart block cardiogenic shock and so this was very uh, alarming so they concluded that qrb myocardial infarction is a sinister form of acute coronary syndrome and entails high in hospital mortality necessitating early reperfusion and prompt institution of reperfusion therapy so whenever you see a qrbb pattern in acute STEMI, the all the measures should be taken to reperfuse the vessels now this is fine this is okay that qrbb pattern if you see an mi it's a poor predictor that means patient has got high chances of mortality but what I want to tell you why it is important. So basically you need to understand that there is a myocardium, the musculature is there in the heart and there are conduction pathways. As compared to myocardium, the bundles are less prone to infarction. Means myocardium is more prone to infarction when, whenever there is an acute blockage in the vessel, the myocardium dies first and bundle branch block resists this uh, ischemic changes. So that's why you have seen that in uh, acute onset LBBB is a criteria for STEMI. If you see in a new onset left bundle branch block, it comes under the STEMI. It means that the vessel blockage and the infarcted area is so much that it has called the left bundle. It has developed the left bundle branch block. So it has it is included in STEMI criteria. But why this QRV pattern is also important because the infarcted area is so much is so intense that it has now involved the right bundle branch also which is actually resistant to ischemia so the bundles are resistant to ischemia in spite of that the infarcted size is so much it's a that right bundle branch block has also got involved so if in STEMI you your patient gets bund right bundle branch block that means this patient can develop complications and there are very high chances of um, high uh, in hospital mortality similarly left bundle branch block if a new onset it is so intense that uh, in uh, criteria also new onset lbb is included in uh, as a criteria for STEMI. now our patient was taken for 
PCI timely vessel was reperfused. Still, the patient developed blocks, uh, uh, complete heart block. Uh, then uh, went into cardiogenic shock. Then IBP was inserted. TPI temporary pacemaker was inserted, and later on, patient uh, required permanent pacemaker. Fortunately, the patient got discharged and doing well. So that's all for today. Always identify QRBB in a patient of MI. If you find that, that means the patient needs to be reperfused at the earliest and there are very high chances of in-hospital mortality. So keep a close watch on him. Thank you. See you in the next video.